Hello there, YouTube. This is Sibbles and Bits back at it again with another Arcanium run. Just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, not doing Thanksgiving on Friday, again, as of right now. So you can expect a video then. And I'm thinking either Saturday or Sunday, I'm actually going to run a Twitch stream, which if you guys have been keeping up with the community posts, if you haven't, that's fine. I'm thinking about turning Twitch streams from, like, more over-explained runs to speedruns. There's been a lot of chat on the Discord about, like, starting up speedrunning in Arcanium, or at least getting it listed, what does that look like, stuff like that. And I think that uh, in a game like Arcanium, that's very interesting. And I think that when I do a six-hour stream, and a run takes five hours... Because I'm sitting here over explaining or maybe doing something a little bit janky so it runs a little bit slower. Having one run out of a Twitch stream doesn't really seem like it's you know, like beneficial to anybody. So if we were doing speed runs and we assume that each one takes about half an hour, um, give or take. Like, I'm trying to get under half an hour, so in all honesty, each run would probably take about, let's just say, 45 minutes, right? So, if I ran a Twitch stream then for four hours, we'd still be able to get more games in. It's uh, relatively easier to cut the VODs for YouTube. There's, like, a lot more that's going on. Like, there's more variants instead of, like, somebody who decides to come by and watch the Twi Twitch stream. They're just watching me do a Thorn Bjorn Lazar run for, like, five hours. And it's just progressively getting better or worse, right? I feel like, um, I don't know. There might be a little bit more content in there. So, again, either Saturday or Sunday. I just got to make sure that I don't double book myself. As soon as I know, I'll obviously put up a uh, community post with all the details. Hope to see you guys there if you can make it. Otherwise, like I said, I'll cut the, uh, the VODs for YouTube. Anyways, with that aside, I wanted to go right into the question for the comments below. So I understand that it's not Thanksgiving for everybody because people are all over the world and Thanksgiving, well, at least American Thanksgiving in this particular case, is uh, happening now. But uh, in sort of the spirit of Thanksgiving, if there's a potluck, what item are you usually bringing? And just in case uh, potluck is like an American thing, I'm sure that other like locales do it it's a event where pretty much everybody brings one item in order to you know like facilitate a dinner for a bunch of people and my answer to that is it depends on if it's for family or for work i've done quite a bit of stuff at work generally i try to make something that's a little off meta if you will which probably doesn't surprise you guys i've made peanut butter pulled pork i've made pizza casserole but uh generally my default like go to if i just don't have anything that i want to try to make then i go with swedish meatballs i'm actually quite <laughs> quite famous at my work for bringing in swedish meatballs but uh definitely people at work eat better than i do for sure other than that, though, um, what I've been trying to work on as my next, like, you know, signature thing, because, you know, Swedish meatballs are nice because nobody really makes them, so that's kind of unique, but it's not really unique enough for me. The thing that I've been sort of, like, uh, tinkering around in the lab for is sweet potato gnocchi. We can actually go ahead and start this, and I can uh, start discussing as we get in there. So, oh my goodness, this is a team. Why do I keep randoming the Bjorn's worst ult? This is, like, again, it has its uses, but it's probably one of the worst ults in the game. 
kind of unfortunate. We got immune on Leon though, but the weird thing is is that if Leon is taking all the damage onto him, providing immune, doing all that stuff, then well <laughs> Um Yeah, I don't know how else to put it. Uh Bjorn's not gonna be getting his toughness, and maybe that's fine. But Bjorn's going to have to, as always, figure out a way to sustain himself in a team that does not have a support. Now, Leon's yellow, so he can get access to heals. But otherwise, we're going to have to find Lifesteal right away. Probably start Anador because that has some of the best, uh, like, sustain relics. Besides, of course, like stuff like Vampiric Scepter or any way to get Leech on the enemy, which honestly one of the easiest ways to do that since we don't have carrion is actually to have uh, the green shrine which only is an anador otherwise Thorum got the etchings which is quite nice because this can be a whole number of things that we could definitely use especially on Bjorn because it can be apply vulnerable it can be apply power it can be apply toughness and applying toughness is still pretty good for him. Especially because if uh, Leon's going to make it so that it's very difficult for him to get toughness. And he needs toughness for like a number of his cards. Like three cards, but they're pretty good cards. Like the ability to lifesteal if you have toughness. And so... We might be able to fill that gap with that. Of course it's random etchings. But... I don't know. Bjorn can be a serious damage engine if Thorum is backing him up. So we might try to do that again. Uh, the Twitch stream that I just mentioned, we were trying to do that. Since Bjorn's generally going to deal damage to himself, he's going to have the lowest amount of health, so he's going to get all of the resolves. And when Thorum has, or sorry, Bjorn has access to a lot of AP, he can do a lot of damage. So. We're going to see how that works. Let's go ahead and start. And we will just go ahead and go to Anador. We're probably going to need it on this team. Is that a shrine? No, it was a uh, camp. Upgrade to abilities. Sounds great. It's weird that all three of these are... I'm not sure about a minion. Minion is good, though. Um, because Thorum interacts with minions. We can hold off on the minion to get a higher rarity minion if we wanted to. Um, something like, uh, Wailing Banshee or Screaming Banshee, whichever one it is that gives, uh, Vulnerable is very good. But we'd have to wait, uh, long enough, which is, like, uh, technically you can get it as early as five, but we'd want to get it, like, somewhere around halfway through the game. And so, like, any purple minion would be fine, because if it's not good, then you can always just send it to an oracle, up tier it into a legendary, which is always the stun dragon, which I do not respect, the prophet that gives uh, power to somebody, or it's the zombie that explodes in 12 AoE, which is quite nice. Three locations in Anador for priority delivery. So loot cache. Um, I'll be honest. Ten tiles for 200 gold. It's something. That's a heal. We have a pocket heal here, so that's nice. Again, we're probably going to want to save this outpost if we're going to grab it at all. But then again, this is our most accessible shards. So that's a little weird. Because we're going to have to like wrap around here to get at these here if we want to scale up. So, we're going to start. It's looking fine. Bjorn's uh, pretty good against these ra razor, razor, feral razor fangs. Because uh, they got the one multi-strike attack. Anyways... For those of you who are unaware, Gnocchi is essentially a uh, a dumpling that's made out of mashed potatoes. Uh, generally, they're pretty small, 
right? Like, uh, the size of, like, uh, your last thumb digit, if you will. And they, you treat them like a noodle, right? You can throw them in a sauce, you can just fry them up with, uh, like a brown butter or something. You can, um, use them with cheese, you can use them with, uh, savory dishes. They're just all around, like, very versatile. And I like them. And I also like sweet potatoes. They've got a very good, um, like, flavor to them. And they also are very versatile. So you can use them in all sorts of dishes. And uh, their taste profile just complements a lot of stuff. Let's do that. That's going to do basically no damage. And so, I've been trying to figure out how to make gnocchi with uh, mashed sweet potatoes. And it's not been very successful lately. Or at all, I suppose. And the main reason I feel for that is I'm obviously, like, disrespecting... Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I'll take that. I think I've been disrespecting the fact that uh, sweet potatoes don't really... Like, they're similar, obviously, to potatoes in the fact that they're, you know, classified as tubers. But, um... They're, <laughs> they're built different. I don't want to say that they're fattier because that's like not really true, but they're sort of like waxy once you like start mashing them and stuff like that. And so I need to figure out like obviously gnocchi works because it's being done with potatoes, right? Like it's expecting like gnocchi recipes are expecting you to use potatoes and potatoes are at a um well i mean in, not to uh sound ignorant but honestly yes a molecular level they're completely different so i may uh, just be screwing up in the sense that i'm more so expecting to get the same results out of a completely different vegetable, right? This is a little awkward. Anyways. So that's my plight. Oh, I have ain't summoned Ceres. Okay, that's actually significantly different and slightly changes our plans here. Guess we'll go ahead and do that. I also did that too early. We could have, um, we could have used this shit. Hmm. That's a little awkward. Anyways, I'm pretty sure that we can get away with just dinking around here. Anyways, that, uh, that was legitimately a, a potluck question though, but I sort of like, I basically wanted to talk about sweet potato and gnocchi, and I turned it into a forum for other people to discuss because, um, you know, not everybody is all about cooking their own food, right? And so, most people have been to a style of potluck, and so they're able to 
communicate in that regard. We're really not going to be able to kill this guy. Because we didn't draw enough of the, um, the actual damage cards. You're not going to get your ult, so I really don't want to kill you. Probably should, though. Let's get that four gold. Anyways, we had um, summon Cirrus in our last run. Uh, the the run on Twitch that uh, I was again mentioning before, and it's honestly not that bad. I'm quite impressed in how it operated, but we did learn a couple of like little quirky things about it. We can go ahead and do this. Let's um. Well, I mean, we don't even have to, really. Like, sure, let's do that. And he's done. Yeah, I'm very impressed with uh, Sigil of Sirius, honestly. And we'll explain the, the jank that I was just mentioning in a bit. I just need to... Vanquish, honestly, isn't that bad. I highly respect Vanquish. But do we need Vanquish? Getting some sort of actual shield on Forum is going to be good, though. Maybe that's Stonewall Plus? Like, probably not. Stonewall Plus is fine. Like, all it has to really do is shield for six. And it's worth a common. So... In order for it to shield for six, it just has to have one card in your your draw pile, and well, it has retained. So you can, if you draw it on when your deck is empty, you can go ahead and just hold on to it. I think we grab this. And because of the fact that we have Sigil of Sirius, these guys don't have Promote. So it's not like we can stamp them on top of the lane when uh, Cirrus is in front of us. So having Stonewall for our own defense is much better in my opinion. An early trainer is nice. Like, honestly, this could pretty much turn into a three tanks run, too, which is quite interesting. I can't play all these. This will block me, though. This will mostly block me. Like, seems pretty freaking good to me. What we're going to do is this, though. We're going to play this guy. We're going to taunt. And we're going to just throw that damage out there. We're perfectly fine with Bjorn taking a little bit of damage. One, we kind of want him to be lower than Leon. And two, he has access to um, his heal ult, which is actually going to scuff up our entire plans. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, this is a travesty. We should be able to kill you regardless, though. Let's go with this. Taunt that in. 
Give you that. Finish you. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do this. Give me some immune. Not really going to make significant difference, but... And then we just got to figure out how to kill you in a couple of turns because um, three poison in an area is no est bueno. Like, that's a huge chunk of damage we're taking just because reasons. And we would prefer to not. Go ahead, I'll block that. And, uh... You can just kill this man. It's perfectly fine. And I guess we'll just uh, use this because we can. Then shift over to here to put one here. Like, there's really not going to be any AoE going on. This, uh, this creature, if you will, does not have AoE. But, you know, just get our thick lads out, right? Get a shout out for the thick lads in chat. This is, uh, kind of awkward. Oh. And you're rooted, so you can't really even get in here. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, it's one damage. We're fine. Mm -hmm. Looks good. All right. For what we're trying to do, recklessness might not be bad. Bottled lightning is an interesting choice, too. Um, we really don't... Well, I mean, theoretically we might, but I don't really see us doing, like, a lot of hits to actually utilize bottled lightning, but Leon's currently quite cheap. And so we could get some use out of this, especially because of the fact that, um, what is it? I mean, Thorum does have a minion. So that's another two AOE just for having a minion in that same lane. But you know what I'm saying? It's not, mm, I think we could do it but I don't think that we should recklessness like losing 4 health for 4 rage is pretty much just it, it's literally gain toughness next turn and then draws a card what is this upgrade to draw 2 cards hey I could definitely see that. Otherwise, if we instilled more burn, this would allow us to get damage on our Cirrus, which is, honestly, we're probably going to pick this for that reason. Once you get damage on Cirrus and you keep Cirrus up 100%, you can be your clock out. And just having a Cirrus with damage is potentially much better than just having burn on the enemy if it's just a little bit of burn because we don't have an insane amount of burn i think that dancing embers and then upgrading it is like the ticket here in this setup i would probably take recklessness if we didn't have cirrus And again, that's probably going to replace, honestly, another Forge Spirit. Let's get to this trainer. I want it. Ooh, Buckshot. I also like Flame Spray for the same... Like, we keep saying, you know, like, Cirrus is going to... The thing is, is that Thorm's pretty much built for a lot of instances of... I absolutely have a minion in my lane. And besides good turns with uh, Ragnarok or like good AI knowledge, you generally don't get that, right? Because on the higher difficulties, you summon a minion to block for somebody and it just gets fucking blown up, 
by multi strike and AoE, and it's terrible. <laughs> but um, with uh, Thorum, not only does he have like you know some beefier minions, but he also has well, in this case, he has Sigil of Cirrus, which is a 15 every other turn. So if you start it on top of a minion, a Forge Spirit, then it becomes like, what, a 20... It's almost... It's a 23. 223. Enemies can deal that much damage. Absolutely. But uh, generally speaking, like, they don't unless they are like a huge single target enemy, which... You obviously wouldn't be placing things in front of in the first place unless you're absolutely sure that you're going to be able to prevent them from killing your minion. And so if it survives a turn, then you got Flame Spray, which is just straight up like a better, <laughs> a better attack card. <laughs> like it's insane. But uh, he's got a lot of cards like that, right? That are like, okay, this minion is alive and he's good at keeping minions alive. Otherwise, Buckshot, again, like, we have two red uh, heroes ranged for damage with crit. Could be significant. Um, Bjorn does have the heirloom that gives him lifesteal while under 12, but that legitimately killed the Twitch stream that I'm talking about because it just decided to stop working. So I've lost all faith in it. Really don't care. Like, <laughs> I'm not looking into it for that purpose. But again, having uh, four range damage on uh, Bjorn is good. He has it on his taunts, but then of course that's like that's a taunt plus Leon taunts. It's really weird. What honestly might be the ticket, and it's really weird. Maybe Bjorn and Leon are supposed to be on opposite sides, the left and right lane. And they just taunt the set, take turns taunting the center lane. And then Thorm's just building his fucking super minion in the middle. Which is generally how you don't do that, because you usually want to kill the center, min center lane because, well, you accidentally deal AoE, or the center lane is generally like the boss or you're trying to negate AoE happening from the center lane and hitting all three people but it might work here anyways I went off on a tangent while talking about Buckshot uh, Recklessness I think we're taking this we skipped it because of the last card but it's pretty damn good apply two burn in an area double the amount of minion is in your lane well Seems pretty freaking good to me. <laughs> we could also maybe take another recklessness. <laughs> try, try and go nigh infinite Bjorn. <laughs> we would need our source of uh, our source of sustain at some point before we started doing something like that. But it's kind of funny. Anyways, um, I don't know. We're probably going to keep this. The apply vulnerable is quite considerable. I also like the, the recklessness and the fire breath here. I actually want to take this now. And the reason I want to take this now is because when we take this chip poison damage, which is going to be terrible, by the way, we forgot to put recklessness and uh, stuff like that in their decks. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm just shifting around in my seat here. Give me a bit. But uh, when we take this chip poison damage, and of course we rolled twos right off the bat, we're at least going to have that uh, pocket camp in the corner that we can use to heal ourselves. And we're just going to face race this as much as we possibly can, honestly. Because this is going to get pretty suffer real fast. Bjorn's like kind of bad for DOTs. His ultimate does cleanse him. But um, by the time we get his ultimate it's going to be too fucking late. Um, Stone shield is actually quite good here.
Dancing Embers isn't going to do anything, so let's just bop this man for absolutely nothing. Uh, taunt this this way. Give me intercept, thank you. And then just throw that out there because we can. Um, ordering. Oh my good lord. I'm glad that Thorm at least has rolled ones every single time. There's a two. Um, shouldn't have talked shit. As they say in the West, talk shit, get hit. Honestly, we'll do that. Your ult is an AoE, but we're going to put this up anyways. At least I think it's an AoE. God, that'd be embarrassing if that wasn't the case. It is. So, the... Immune is definitely going to help. Is it possible for us to kill you? I actually think it is. Look at that. Bjorn saving the day. Again. Actually, honestly, just full block and put this little uh, funky dude out. Bjorn should be able to, he can. that out there and then just that and we're fine that was a lot of damage taken though hmm ice barrier is interesting arcane ward is incredibly interesting judgment however is sustain and that's currently where Leon's suffering because he's trying to taunt a lot of shit and then he just ends up getting bopped for it. <sighs> Arcane Ward. <laughs> oh, man. Especially because when it upgrades, it goes to two ward. Mm. Then, of course, Ice Barrier, also pretty good. Giving everybody shields is very nice, especially in cases like that where everyone's going to get like little DOTs on them. But uh, I honestly think that we need to do Judgment. How do you upgrade? Plus two. 50%, of course. Um, and let's get that in there. I will honestly... Should probably... Guess we'll go ulti plus. Eh? We still didn't... Oh my good lord. One of these days I'm going to get good. And then you're all going to be sorry. Here we go.
right. Hmm. We're kind of caught between Hard Rock and a place here. I'm fine with us getting this DOT because we're about to cleanse it. As long as we draw a card. There is the card. It's pretty good. This is a little awkward. Thought that we were gonna full block there. Don't know why. It's obviously 21 damage. Okay, we have the boys. Of course, we have toughness on the turn when nobody's attacking us. Well planned. actually works out. Hmm. Overpower. I'm not quite sure about that, though. Um, I honestly think that it might be Static Burst. Being able to absorb all minor debuffs in an area. That way, we only need Cleanse on one person. And it could very easily be Leon. He's also able to shield through quite a bit of its... Um, he can get access to lots of uh, sources of cleanse due to his colors. Yeah, I'm really about it. Otherwise, overpower. Overpower is good. I just, um, I'm not thinking that it's for this Leon, right? Or at least we haven't, like, gotten the drafts to be like, okay, Leon's going to be, like, bolster damage. If Leon was supposed to be bolster damage, then, um, first off, we would prefer to have the AoE power. That would be much better for, uh, bolster damage. Or his taunt, maybe. But, um... Yeah, it's just a bit strange. Not in this run, I think. Otherwise, um, Blood Armor is also very good. 3 health for 12 shield is an easy trade in a lot of cases. But we're going to try out uh, Static Burst here. Actually, let's uh, go for that uh, ulti plus. we got tons of resources just lying around, too. Oh, let's... <laughs> Let's remember, huh? I think we can probably cut a pommel strike for our setup here.
Oh, we're gonna get bopped hard this fight. Timing? Because you were going to have your ult? Oh my good lord. I guess we're going to do this janky move right here. You have nothing in your deck, so uh, Stonewall's going to do practically nothing. I definitely don't think that I eat 12. We're going to need one of those campfires after this. If we get this elusive, it's going to be worth it, though. We're not going to get the elusive. Son of a bitch. Oh my good lord. Can we draw just one life steal? Apparently not. Well, there's our life steals while he has a uh, frickin' frick frack. Today's not our day, apparently. Dude, we have just been getting bopped. And I'm not necessarily sure that any of these help us. Challenge wants to be upgraded. I'm not sure that a retained taunt is worth it. Uh, heroic strike is good. But are we actually going to use it? I don't know. I don't know. I think we're honestly going to take the gold here. I could see vault, but... Alright. Who needs this the most? I honestly think that it might be Thorum. But Thorm definitely doesn't push, push as much output as um, Bjorn. I just feel like shit giving it to Bjorn when he... Uh, when all he's getting is that ulti that only pops off like three times a fight. Like, um, that's a total of 36 healing dirt burst versus shard bosses that we don't just face race. Which is quite considerable, but we're only getting it off like once during other fights. Elites, we might get it off twice. 24 healing is, like, great. It's just not gonna be... If it wasn't on Bjorn, right, 24 healing would be amazing. 
We'll give it to him. Okay. Still got a lot of threat to go, actually. We're looking pretty good. So then we'll heal everybody once there. We'll probably heal everybody once here. And I'm going to fight this at like 8. This card pile might be significant, but then it's going to lock us out of this capital after this fight. Oof. Um, this event might be handy. Restore 12 health to all party members. Son of a bitch. Oh, man. Well. Alright, here's our minion. Honestly? Rugged Ice Walker, maybe? It's a defensible minion. Otherwise, if we're trying to play minions that uh, are going to benefit us when we are playing... What is it? When we're playing Cirrus, we'd want to have a little bit more damage. So maybe Wakai Recruit. It also allows us to block two different lanes, but not one lane when we uh, when we draw it. Otherwise, it saves Bjorn a lot of AP. And he's able to play it on turns when he wants to do other things that cost two AP. But that'd also be a reason to grab Rugged Ice Walker, because it's just two less block one less damage on um, our Forge Spirits. Shard Keeper is also quite interesting. It'd be the same cost as Shard, uh, or um, it would be the same cost as uh, Forge Spirit, but since it applies to Weak Forge, it's very good versus Multi-Strike and AoE attacks, which is something that otherwise, like, he can't really do much of. It might be Shard Keeper. We were also going to grab this significantly later. I thought that we were going to be able to cash this in. Which is a me problem. Alright. Who, who honestly needs cards? I think it's Bjorn. Because Bjorn needs something that's actually going to get a, give him some benefit. Like, Reckless Blow is probably our best card right now. Mind Spike's nice. Um, Blood Frenzy is incredibly spiced. We would need a damn good, like, lifesteal in order for us to, like, be okay with that. Because when you have stuff like, um, we're burning people, that counts. We are... Leon's got AoE. <laughs> that counts. Like, we need something very significant before we take Blood Frenzy. And then even if you're looking at, like, okay, so, um... Everybody on the turn does all their damage first, and then we might have a lifesteal in hand and we gain might for it. But, um, that one might isn't making up for the two health that we're losing. So... This would be good if we had access to crit, which we currently don't. But Mind Spike's good to see. I definitely like that. And then, of course, Revenge. Like, I'll take it. For sure. I just gotta decide what I'm cutting here. It might be Pommel Strikes, honestly. Purple's unresisted here, as is red, but, um... Again, Taunting's just weird for us right now. Alright, so now... We're at the point where we kind of want to hit one of these. We gotta decide which one we want to hit. Do we want to breach into Scorchland? There's, there's just so many shards here. If we were doing good, this, this build would blow up right now because we've got access to one two three four five in close proximity 
It would be insane. Otherwise, we still haven't found our shrines here. And again, we actually have a use for the green shrine, which is a little weird. Those aren't our shrines. Fenrir Green Soul Stealer. That is catastrophic. Is that worth a loot cache at eight? I don't think it does. It is. Huh. Could have been worth a loot cache. If they wanted to give me a purple. Holy lord. Right out the bat too. That's how I'm feeling about that. We of course hit this AoE here. At least these minions here. Are like relatively fine. Like we're obviously going to get poisoned here. That's going to be a pain in the ass. But um. Honestly what we probably should have done is put Bjorn over here. So that he, he would be taking the poison damage. But as soon as he gets his ult out, it's over. And uh, with Fenrir, we generally... We can't do, like, um, 105 damage in a turn with this team. So we definitely want to try and uh, clock this man out. We want to make sure that we take care of these side lanes. Start stacking up burn here. Like, as soon as we get Cirrus, Thor moves to the middle, pops it down... And then we just start going ham on this guy. You may actually be able to fix this, actually. I think it's going to take a crap ton of damage for it, though. Yeah, that would have been a great turn over on the left there. Because, what, we dealt, like, I don't know, 29 damage? We'd almost be dead. We are going to shift this over. Start stacking that burn. This is Suffer, though. Finally, a respite. That solves that problem. Now we just gotta solve this problem over here. Yeah, I think this guy is just going to exist. I don't think that we can actually kill him without getting Bjorn over here. And I don't even know if Bjorn can tank this. Let's, um... Let's make this happen. After all, that's pretty much done over there. I don't think that we're dead here. I 
I say with wavering assurity. Well, this is happening right here. Cannot get away with that. Okay, that enemy needs to die this turn. <laughs> um, can we do it? Maybe. We can do it. We'll even get it done right here. There we go. We are getting too many resolves. Can't use all this shit. That was honestly a perfect turn for Leon. Um, actually, it had... I thought that immunity was a major buff. It's a minor buff? <sighs> well, today we learned. Okay. I think we're dead. I legitimately thought that that was a major buff and couldn't be dispelled. But, uh, I guess this is what happens when you think, huh? We're about to hit the double damage threshold, too. I don't think that this, uh, this blocking is going to last for that much longer. At least we get the uh, the resolves now. We can actually like get something going here. Just gotta make sure that we're careful with what exactly we're doing, like um, you know, wasting stone wall and shit like that. So if that's the case, then we're going to do this. Prep you a little more. God, I wish that I could, uh... Well, I guess I can do this to you. Get that sucker rolling. We've only got two more swaps available. We actually don't have... We're going to have to swap this turn. Because we cannot afford to lose this uh, Spirit of Sirius. And this is our last swap that we have. He's got to die next turn. I think that we lived. 
<laughs> it's crazy. But I think we lived. Mm, that's pretty chunky, don't you think? I think Crusader's Blade would be pretty good here. Again, Executioner's Axe has burnt me. Maybe we still go with it despite all that. Because that plus Blood Frenzy might honestly be our only ticket out of here. Alive. Otherwise, Dark Helm is pretty good with our current build because we are dealing a lot of damage to ourselves and we don't have that uh, that lifesteal payout, but that would be why we would want Executioner's Axe. Oh, frick. We'll take Executioner's Axe. Hey, Berserker Strike Plus is pretty freaking good. You don't have access to Blinder Stun, so this is kind of like meh right now. Uh, Ram's an incredibly good card. It's just that it's a little bit weird. I would honestly take this if Berserk Strike wasn't here. Again, we we need the sustain. You're not going to live without it. That goes into the deck. Store 10 health to all my heroes, please. We'll take Berserker Strike over a Axe Cut because in this deck we're dealing a ton of self-damage. And Blood Frenzy might actually replace Mind Spike. Although Mind Spike being able to theoretically lifesteal below 12 and do piercing damage means that uh, we won't get cucked by shield. So I actually quite like that. Um... Maybe Blood Frenzy replaces a Reckless Blow? I still don't think that, uh... Let's see how this works before we start putting in Blood Frenzy, but... I also like that at a one cost, personally. Okay. Heals? Do we even have an artifact? We don't even have any artifacts. We haven't taken any elites. Duplicate an ability of your choice. What would that be? Another Berserker Strike Plus, honestly, is incredible. That might be the missing ticket here with uh, Blood Frenzy. Hmm. I like what I see. Yeah, because the odds of us doing damage to ourselves in a turn is almost certainly going to happen. So Berserker Strike is honestly pretty good. We can also combo this with a ton of... Um, if we are going to break over into um, Scorched Lands, which I think that we are. Then there's a lot of other things that we can use that for too. Like this will be activated just by playing any card if we have Obsidian Shiv. There's also quite a few cards I believe that also react pretty well with this um, Elemental Maul would also be pretty good with Berserker Strike except for the fact that uh, yeah we've got the shittiest ulti in existence the only ulti that I think is possibly worse than Death Sentence would probably be Carrion's Shuffle Minion ult like it's very good but, eh, like, at least it heals you. So I think that it's better than Death Sentence. Um, but otherwise, you really, if you're actually using it for scaling his starter minions, you've, 
you've got to be on top of your shit at like calculating oh, okay so how do I do this because you don't want to take all three of his starter minions and just shuffle them into your uh, onto the top of your discard pile because then you just end up with three minions which I don't know might be what you're looking for but um, you're not doing much else all you're doing is scaling hmm Anyways, I'm digressing. I, I suppose down in the comments below, if you don't want to talk about, you know, uh, potlucks and what you bring to them, um, another question, uh, what do you think is the worst ultimate in this game? Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. And I really want to hit this at 10 at the latest. Which means I I honestly think that this... Well, there's our nature shrine. We also have, like, no help. So I guess we're actually stuck here for a while. There's money. Yeah, I think we're stuck here for a while. And if we're stuck here for a while, we might as well take this nature shrine, this loot cache. This event might heal us. Toxicity in our city. Giving everybody eight extra health isn't actually... It's not honestly that bad. It increases our one-shot window to above... Um, above brood sentinels because at that point we would have I don't know if this actually gets reduced by the reduced health in this difficulty but we definitely lose I believe 20% of this so we're losing about 11 we're at like 45 getting another 8 hmm So that wouldn't actually bring us out of the one shot window. So maybe it's draw toxicity. It could be draw toxicity due to the fact that uh, if we're staying here for a while, we're highly likely to get um, snake fang, crit versus poisoned enemies. And if that's the case, then we probably want um, an ability to actually put out poison. This would enable that. It's also obviously good for face racing. Which, um, we're kind of lacking in damage, but I feel like Bjorn's starting to get it. I think we can use this. It's very bad. Oh my god. It's incredibly bad for, um... What is it? Blood Frenzy? Because that's another tick of damage. Let's get this. It's kind of a receive a campsite. Okay. Okay. I will take health. And so then when we come back, we're going to have to fight this to get our capital back. And then um, it'll be like threat 11 ish when we hit this, assuming that we take this breach elite battle. Assuming we can take a Breach Elite Battle. So then this will be in the next tier of rarity. And uh, that just feels good. It's not going to be like we can't get a common. It's probably going to be a common. Uh, you guys can tell me uh, in the comments of the next video. I called that this was going to be a common. But um, I don't think that we're bad right now. We're just not good. And we're certainly not great. But, uh, yeah. I think that we can definitely turn this around. Turn this into something. Uh, Bjorn's starting to develop. Leon. Leon could honestly use a little bit of help. To be honest. I think this Forge Spirit becomes a Shard Keeper. And then, uh... We need to find Leon one card to bring him up to ulti plus, which is going to help him significantly. Anyways, 
that's going to be it for today's video. Um, be sure to leave down in the comments below. Uh, again, the potluck question. Where's Dalton in the game? Uh, any sort of feedback you got? How do you think the? What do you think about this team? What do you think about where we're taking this team? Where would you take this team? Uh, any other sorts of feedback, questions, concerns, comments, misplay alerts, be sure to leave that down in the comments below. And until next time, I'll catch you guys around.